Okay, so we are going to continue our work with solving the homogeneous Laplace's equation on a rectangular domain, uh, which is in section 4.3. So we, we started talking about this last time. So if you'll recall, the situation is we have the Laplacian of u is equal to zero on some rectangular boundary whose um, x limits are zero l and the y limits are zero and h. Um, and we had completely non-homogeneous, but at least Dirichlet boundary conditions, which are given right here. So we had uh, the U prescribed at each of the boundaries. I'm not going to completely redo everything that we finished class with last time we met, in case you're worried about that. Not that we did all that much on this, but I'm going to skim quickly. And so the idea um, was that we were going to solve this by writing u as the sum of two functions, u sub 1 and u sub 2 where each one of them solves um, a, a variant on the equation. So u1, let's say, although, I mean, obviously order doesn't count, um, we said satisfied homogeneous boundary conditions on the y boundary. So we had um, this... These were our boundary conditions for the x boundary. And then we had u sub 1 of, z of at x0 equals u sub 1 of xh equals 0. And u sub 2, for u sub 2, we had the uh, homogeneous conditions on the x boundary and then the non-homogeneous were on the y boundary. So something like this. And so we're going to solve those separately using separation of variables and then sum the result. So we already showed that, uh, that the sum satisfies the original problem and all the boundary conditions are applied. So we take the two um, problems and solve them independently. So just as a quickie illustration, I will solve the first one. I think I'll just leave the second one to your imagination. Not really. I mean, it's the same thing, right? So we do our usual, separate the variables. And then, um, let's say that's u1. So I guess maybe if we're being really good, we put x1 and y1, but that's too much of a pain. So we, I don't want to get too subscript happy, so we'll just cheat and use the same variables. So uh, the second partial with respect to x is going to give me d squared x d little x squared times y. And the second partial with respect to y is going to give me um, this. And... Uh, let me just do the boundary conditions to get them out of the way. So the uh, the boundary condition is at uh, zero at y equals zero is zero, and so that's going to give me that y of zero is zero, and similarly at uh, y equals h. I'm going to get that y of h is 0. Okay, so let's plug everything into the equation now. I'm going to get y times d squared x d little x squared plus 
x times d squared y d little y squared is equal to zero. I'm going to do this a little differently than I have it in my typed uh, notes. So we're going to do our usual, uh, right, where we uh, divide both sides by, divide through by x and y, and then I'll worry about getting everything where it belongs. So we get uh, the usual suspects. So there are two approaches to doing this. One approach would be that since uh, the y variable is where I have my boundary conditions, I'm going to leave it all by its little low lonesome and throw the x on the other side. And again, those are equal to a constant. We can call that constant negative lambda. And so we do that. We obtain um, two equations that we need to solve. Right, the usual uh, suspect, so to speak. So we get the system. Uh, let me see, what are we going to get? Oh, y double prime plus lambda y is equal to zero. y of zero equals y of h equals zero. And we're going to get uh, x double prime abusing nastily my derivative notation. Except this one's not going to be a plus, it's going to be a minus lambda x equals zero. Okay, so this first one um, is an eigenvalue problem that we've solved before. So I'm going to cheat and say from previous work, or we know, or whatever you want to say. From previous work, we know lambda sub n is going to be n pi. Well, it's not n pi over l, it's n pi over h for n equals 1, 2, etc and y sub n is going to be sine of n pi over hy. Okay, so now we have x double prime minus n pi over h quad e squared x is equal to zero. And the solution for this one is going to be what? It's going to be x sub n of x is going to be some linear combination however we want to call it, uh, of the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine. And that's for all n equals 1, 2, 3, etc., etc., etc. All righty, so here we go. For each n equals 1, 2, etc., Right, we know that u sub n of x, y is just going to be the product of these two solutions. So we're going to get uh, u sub 1n. So that's, that's our first kind of partial solution. So we're going to get c sub n cosh n pi over hx. Uh, sine n pi over h y plus d sub n singe n pi over h x sine n pi over h y. Phew. Alrighty, generalized superposition. I know, fun and games. So now we do our generalized superposition and we take the sum of all of those for all possible uh, n's and we get the summation n going from 1 to infinity of c sub n cosh n pi over h x sine n pi over h y plus d sub n singe n pi over hx sine n pi over hy. Okay, so now we solve for c sub n and d sub n by applying the boundary conditions that we haven't used yet. Specifically, 
we know that g sub 1 of y is going to be u sub 1 of 0, y. And so when we plug in x equals 0, we end up with summation and going from 1 to infinity, c sub n sine of n pi over h y, which tells us that the right-hand side has to be the Fourier sine series of g sub 1 y, which tells us that c sub n are going to be 2 over L integral from 0 to L of g1 of y <clears throat> wait something's wrong there <clears throat> yeah sine of n pi over hy dy uh wait two over h integral from zero to h sorry my bad uh what about g2 well, g2 of y is uh, u evaluated at, at l. So uh, this time we have a whole barrel of monkeys coming at us. Well, let's see. So x is l. And let's see. X is L. Eek. So um, you can you can see that in this case it really would have been so much smarter to write this as a single sum. But oh well. You know what they say about hindsight. All right, so the right-hand side then has to be the Fourier sine series of G sub 2. All righty then. So that tells me that this whole shooting match Uh, here, so the c sub n cosh n pi l over h plus d sub n singe n pi over h has to equal um, the the b sub n, which is going to be 2 over h integral 0 to h g2 of y sine of n pi over h y dy. Um, and then solving that gives us the d sub n, and then we're gonna we would solve for um, u sub two similarly. And I think I I am I'm going to actually uh, stop it here and put the other example on a separate recording just so you don't have. Too much trouble downloading these or viewing them. Okay, so catch in, in a bit. Bye.